Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to our Cooking Live with Donna. Today, you can see I changed my position so that I can actually cook with her. I'm, I'm not going to make everything, but I'm going to try to attempt these greens with her today. So if you have some of your ingredients, go get them. And um, please, please, please join in. Or if you can't do it now, you can always watch this again. And then you can cook with her at that time. We want to welcome you again this afternoon. Thank you for joining us. And we want to ask you to please, please share this with whomever you know so that they too can be blessed by viewing this program. I know I've learned a lot. And if there are things you've tried over the last few days, please, please put that in the chat so that we can see some of the things that you have tried and done over the past few days. Again, I am Dr. Christina Wells. I am the health ministry leader for the Lake Region Conference of Seven Day Adventists. And before we get started, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Donna Green Goodman. She is a career public health educator. She graduated from Oakwood University with a degree in home economics and nutrition, and she earned her master's in public health from Loma Linda University in California. As a 25 year breast cancer survivor, Donna discovered the value of the power of plant foods in preventing and reversing disease. She has authored three books on healthy living called Something to Shout About. The second book is Cooking Up Good Health, and the third book is still cooking up good health. And I will tell you, I have one of those books and it's awesome. She is a host and executive producer of the cooking show, Cooking Up Good Health, which airs on Bounce TV, Huntsville and Hope Channel. And she's, you can also visit her. She has a lifestyle therapeutics YouTube channel and her and her husband, who is a physical therapist on a lifestyle therapeutics, which is a lifestyle center uh, for better health in Huntsville, where she provides wellness counseling and coaching and cooking classes. She also has a weekly show called Wellness Will uh, well Wellness Wednesday, excuse me, on Instagram that airs on Wednesdays at 8:30 a.m. Central Time. Again, um. Please, uh, later to, in the show, I will be putting in the link um, in the chat feature, actually. I'll be putting in links to the recipes that she's done all this week. There will also be a link to the evaluation form. I fixed it from yesterday, so it does work. And then also later on, we'll have a link to her um, book, uh, her website where you can get her books, and also to another program that she's going to be doing next week. Um, dealing with women's health. So again, we welcome you. I just want to say a short prayer as we begin. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you. Thank you for bringing us to another day. Thank you for this Sabbath preparation day. We ask that you would be with us, be with our technology, be with the program. May it be a blessing to all who will, who will view. May they learn to live well through their health, dear God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All righty. Hello, Donna. Hey, happy preparation day, Lake Region. How are you today? I'm doing good. I was trying to make sure that I had everything ready. I'm using all the eyes on the stove. The oven is burning. Um, thinking about questions that you may have had that some of your participants may have had and wanting to make sure that today is a blessing to you as we get ready for staff. How are you? I am good and looking forward to all the comments and questions that people are going to give us today and looking forward to what you're going to be cooking today. As you see, I got closer to my Instapot so yes. I can cook with you. Um, but we're excited about this Sabbath dinner that you're going to be making today. Sabbath dinner, um, I have some cousins who live here in town and we laugh because we grew up, her grandmother in Allegheny East Conference in Philadelphia and my mom um, were good cooks. And the ritual of getting ready for Sabbath, of course on Friday, 
but sometimes on Thursday night because of family commitments and all of that and you're running the house and when you get off of work on school on Friday, you don't want all that extra stuff to do. So in my home, my mom cooked us in the kitchen with her and we helped get ready for Sabbath. And I can remember the first meal that I cooked was a Sabbath dinner. I think I was about nine years old and mommy took me in the kitchen. I remember rice. I remember some kind of veggie meat with gravy, maybe some greens and some corn. But I was just amazed that she let me cook the veggie meat with the gravy and we ate it for Sabbath. And that was such a memorable experience for me. And so today, what I'm preparing are things that we typically eat for Sabbath dinner within our culture. Um, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. And I'm cooking from an African-American Southern perspective. But as I have mentioned in some of my presentations the other day, if you're Caribbean, there's some twists for that. If you're African, truly African, there's some things that you can do with that. It, it really just does depend on the favorite things that you like to eat and that um, bring happiness and joy to you. We don't want to tax you for, for stuff on Sabbath. You know, because that is our day of rest and we don't want to make it harder. So sometimes we do something like haystacks, which is, of course, standard SBA. Um, my husband is one who doesn't mind if we just have sandwiches or soups um, so that it's really easy to do. But when you have the time and you're planning ahead, you can plan a meal that's nutritious and delicious and 100 percent plant based. And there are some things that are standard among us as Sabbath keepers that you're not quite sure if you can keep if you decide to go the other direction. What we're gonna do first is make the pound cake, but I also wanna show you, somebody asked me about doing um, a pecan patty. And so in the pink book doc, there is a recipe for a pecan patty. There are two of them actually. If you have your pink book, one is on page 51 and one is on page 52. I made these with my students when I was teaching at Oakwood. And one of my students, B, who was actually in Lake Region Conference, she took it up another notch. And basically what you do with this is you have water that's seasoned. So I have three cups of water that I have put some rags and onion powder and garlic powder and sage and thyme, a little smoke. Um, and to this, you're going to add three cups of quick oats. And you're going to stir it in and you're just going to let this cook so it's almost just like making oatmeal except you season the water savory i'm going to add pecans to mine because most of the patties that i used to make growing up were pecan oat patties and i enjoy the flavor that the pecans put in it so i'm going to put that on here and i'm going to stir it up and I'm going to put it back on the stove on low, and we're just going to let this simmer and get thick. And this is a great way to make this. Um, I think I'm going to add some nutritional yeast flakes. That always gives a good flavor, too. This is a good way to do this because typically the old school pecan patties or oat patties had eggs in them, and that's what the binder was. And this way you don't have to worry about the binder. You literally just let this sit. And we're gonna put this over here on the heat and it's gonna thicken up. And then we're gonna come back and make the patties out of it. And I'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna turn this on low and let it absorb that water. The other thing that I wanna show you before we get started is what we made yesterday. which was a cheesecake. And I wanted you to see what it looked like. Where are you, Doc? It looks awesome. You're teasing me again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to make sure everybody saw it in case they were interested in making it. And remember, we made the topping strictly with the fruit juice and the fresh fruit in it. And then you can see the texture inside of the cheesecake. I'm turning it opposite to what? Is everything yeah, yeah, that right there, like, yeah, right there. Okay, yeah. it looks just like cheesecake. Yes, 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 yes. And that's tofu, tofu and non-dairy cream cheese. And you see oh. the crust. Oh, looks good. Doesn't that look delicious? It does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and it tastes good too. So that's that. You could do peach topping, cherry topping. You could mix different flavors inside of it if you wanted to make like a sweet potato cheesecake. Any of those variations you could do by adding it to the batter. But I wanted to make sure that I showed you that first. Awesome. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. So I also want to show everybody the book. Here's the book um, close up to it, Ken. And uh, those oak paddings are on page 51 and 52. So get your book. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is get the cake in the oven first, because that's gonna take some time on a lower oven and then we'll turn the oven up for the mac and cheese. I've already added three cups of all-purpose unbleached flour to the bowl. If you don't wanna use any flour that is whiter flour, then you can use whole wheat flour. I had a student who was that way when I was teaching at Oakwood. And what I told her to do was to sift it several times so that it would lighten the texture of the cake. And her cake had a little more yellow color to it than this one does. Then I'm gonna add two cups of sugar. And what I often say when I do this recipe is comparing it to the one that I used to make, I would probably do three cups of sugar to three cups of flour, a pound of butter, and maybe four to six eggs. So we've totally eliminated the eggs and we've cut the fat in half. So while there is still sugar in here, um, there are no eggs, there's no milk, there's no butter, and the amount of sugar that's there is less than it would normally be. Then I'm gonna add baking powder, and I mentioned the other day the differences in the baking powder that I use. I like to use featherweight because it does not have aluminum or baking soda, both of which are harmful to the body. Then I'm going to add some salt. teaspoon of salt, and you should have the recipe there with you if you got the download. Right, so someone asked, I know that we, so about the recipes, they are all um, in the, if you look at the description of the program on Facebook and YouTube, there's two links there. The first one is the link to all the recipes. The second one is the link to the evaluation form. And please complete the evaluation form so that we can bring more great programs to you. Now, someone asked, the, the recipes that you cooked this week, are they also in your cookbook? Some of them are, I would say, they're in a cookbook. I, I don't remember which one it is, Okay. but they're in a cookbook for sure. Um, the cheesecake and stuff, yeah, between cooking up good health and still cooking up good health, the mac and cheese, yeah. Yeah, they should be able to find it. And you can also go online to the YouTube channel and I'm demonstrating a bunch of it. Awesome. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is add some margarine or oil. In the original recipe, I called for, um, I think it was, um, canola oil. And this is from 25 years ago when I was still using canola oil, but it seemed to be challenging and a stumbling block to people. So I stopped using it so that it wouldn't be a disadvantage to them. Canola oil comes from the rape seed, which is a little seed. So it comes from a good place, but people are concerned about the way that it's manufactured. So if that's not what you want to use, you can use another vegetable oil. You can even use light olive oil and it would be fine. So in here I have my fat. I'm gonna add a cup and a half of milk and I'm using vanilla soy milk. But again, if you like almond milk or oat milk like my husband does, you're welcome to use that. Then what we're gonna do in place of the eggs, we're gonna put half a pack of the silken tofu. And I usually just open it and squeeze half the pack in. And often when I do this, if I'm having Sabbath dinner here, because we, I grew up here and we've lived here for the last, was it 15 years now? Mm -hmm. 15 years. A lot of folk, when they're in town, they're out here for dinner. So it's rare that I just make one cake. And that's a good thing because you're only using half a pack per cake. So you can literally make two cakes at the same time if that's what you want to do. Next, we're going to add our flavoring. And we're going to make this one a lemon cake. So I'm going to put in a tablespoon of vanilla. And of course, I mentioned to you the other day that I am using um, alcohol-free vanilla that you can get at your health food store. And I understand yesterday that my schoolmate Pam Daly runs the um, ABC at Shiloh. Get her to get some of this so that you'll have access to it. 
Then I'm going to add a tablespoon of lemon flavoring. And the brands that I'm using are Simply Organic. The other one is Frontier. And then I use Spice Reshop. So I have in here now my fat, my milk, my tofu, and my um, flavorings. I'm going to put this on the blender. of quick breads or quick products. And this is one of those cakes that you make like you're making cornbread. You do not need to use your KitchenAid. You do not need to take a hand mixer and mix it. If you do all that, it's gonna add a challenge to what you're trying to, to finish. This is as simple as it gets. I've already stirred the dry ingredients. Now I'm going to take the wet ingredients and pour it inside of the dry ingredients. If anybody's cooking with me at home, please let her know if I need to slow down or show you something or repeat a question. Someone just had a question of, can you use silk vanilla creamer in place? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And I think that's probably one of the best things that I like about this, not insisting that it has to be the products that I use because it's been trial and error in my home. And my husband and son have been extremely patient as I have worked on these recipes. And if there's something that they don't like, they tell me and I go back to the drawing board. And like I mentioned the other night, for years we've used soy milk. I grew up drinking the soy milk, but very recently my husband, Eddie, who was a son of Lake Region, began to use the um, oat milk and it's changed his life. So yeah, if you wanna use cream or use cream. Is that going to make it more, uh, what what difference is that? Will that more make? Moist, more moist. Okay. All right. Now to this, we're going to add two tablespoons of lemon juice. This is the fresh lemon juice I've been talking about all week. And this is going to smooth the batter out. If you want to, you can take this. Instead of putting it in a bun pan, you can put it in layers. If you want to add a little more milk to it, you can make cupcakes for children and ice them. It turns out beautifully. I'm going to come around there in a second so you can see the batter up close. This is all the stirring that you do, y'all. You don't want to overbeat it because it's a quick one. So you want to just get it nice and mixed. Now, one of the things that you probably are used to is coloring your cake. Turmeric can be added to the batter if you want it to look yellow. So I'm going to add a little turmeric to this so that the final product is going to have a yellow color to it. And the sugar that's in here overpowers the strength of the taste of the um, turmeric, so it's not a problem. And there it has that little yellow color. And then if you experiment with other plant-based colorings like beet powder or um, spinach powder, you could probably put that in there as well if you were making something that you wanted colored. Can everybody see the batter? That's it. Any questions about the batter? No, it looks great. Okay. Yeah, we could see it well. It was. It looks great. All right. Here we go. Now we're going to pour it in a bunt pan. And of course, my husband and son were happy when I started making this because there are no eggs in it, so they could lift the spoon because there's no danger of the raw egg. And then one of the secrets that my mom always said, and it's something that I have continued to do, she said, love is the secret ingredient, but we always, whenever we're in the kitchen, we are praying. <laughs> Lord, be with this food. Make it to be a blessing to people. Make sure that it turns out really well. And um, Sister White talks a lot about the science of good cookery. 
and and there's a statement i'm not sure which book it's in but she said over the graves of many should read died of poor cooking so if you are a cook we want you to make sure you're doing it really well and if you're not and you want to learn we want to make sure we can teach you so this goes in the oven now at 350 for about 50 minutes which means it should be ready right at four o'clock so that you can see it Questions about that? Nope, I think we're good. I just put in the link to the evaluation again as well. And again, a previous step put the link to the recipes. Is this the same thing as the Lisa's? Yes, Lisa's Luscious Pound Cake. Okay. Okay. The next thing that we want to do is quickly make these before they get too hard. Eddie, need you. Well, it needs to cool down before I can put my hand there. But you see how stiff that's gotten now? So we're going to take these and form them into patties. But I'll wait a little longer till it cools some more. I need that pan where this stuff is. Thank you. Okay, so now it's time for macaroni and cheese. Who's ready for that? Me, me, me. me. <laughs> really easy and if you're cooking with me I'll give you a few minutes to get it boiled while we're giving you a few minutes for that I'm going to show you how easy it is to do these greens like I said we have a garden where we're raising collards kale um, turnip broccoli cauliflower and we use all the greens and we use the green leaves from the cabbage from the broccoli and the cauliflower and there's green cabbage and red cabbage out there too Usually we'll use those, but we're switching seasons now. So the new ones are too young for us to pick yet. And the old ones are about gone. So we just went to the grocery store and we got some greens and my husband washed them up and cut them for me. And typically I would put these inside of a pot on top of the stove and cook them till they were tender. Or I would put them in my crock pot and cook them overnight. But since I have gotten an instant pot, I like to use it as well. And the reason I really enjoy it is because you can just turn it on and go. And you don't have to use as much in it. So you end up using the pressure that's going to ex exert or pull out the water that's inside of the greens. And most of the fruits and vegetables that we eat have about equal amount of water in them, 70 to 80% as do the, does the human body. So what we're going to do now is take these greens and we're just going to stuff them down inside here. There's a line in here that they tell you not to go above. And I usually don't go above it unless I'm doing greens because I know they're going to cook down and I don't worry so much about that. It's not meat or anything. Then I have cut up red onion, garlic, and red pepper. Are you working with me, Doc? You got yours going? I got mine going here yeah. and I'm getting ready to put them in in a few minutes. I'm, I'm doing kale greens though. Okay, that's fine. I, I would use the same recipe for it because the green itself is, is what has a different flavor. These are just red onions that I sliced. And I started cooking with red onions and red bell pepper in my greens years ago when I lived in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, one of my friends at church asked me to do a demonstration and he wanted me to make Ethiopian collard greens. And that's when I discovered that when Ethiopians make theirs, they do red onion, red bell pepper, fresh garlic, ginger and spices and so this is like the southern version of that so we're going to add that in and then i'm adding some mckay's i'm adding some bacon which gives you that southern smoke flavor if you don't have that you can use um the liquid smoke or some smoked paprika and because it's summertime i'm going to add some sugar to them because the greens that you get in the winter time are sweeter and more tender because the frost has hit them. And in the summertime when you're cooking greens for Sabbath dinner or for a family gathering, they take longer to cook. They're not always as sweet because they've grown in the summertime. And so that's why I add the sugar to it. Now I'm gonna add the rest of the greens and mash those down inside of here. And then I'll put the same seasonings on top. I think we'll get them all in here. How's it going, Doc? 
She probably got her hands in the stuff and can't say. It's, it's going well. I have a question. Now, I saw one of your shows before. Uh -huh. um, or maybe it was on Facebook. And you mentioned this pepper-like seasoning. Yes, pepper. And I have fallen in love with it. And they canceled it. No, uh, we still have it. Well, it I want, I'm going to order some from you because we can't get it anymore. I get it from the from Apple Valley in Westmont, where I live. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to send you an account <laughs> so that you can give me some. Because literally, this pepper-like seasoning, I have stopped recommending it because I can't find it anymore. But this you use in place of black pepper. Yeah, it's awesome. It is amazing. I think there's licorice in here. I'm not sure what else. There's garlic in it. Um, but my sister-in-law was struggling to stop eating black pepper. And when she found this, she was good to go. So yeah, if you have some of that, put that in there. And if y'all can get some over there at um, Shiloh, get it. And I'm literally, I'm going to send you something so I can get some more. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to put the rest of the onions and the bell peppers right on top here. And you mentioned that someone this morning was talking about making greens with coconut milk. You can do that as well. I know that is very similar to a recipe, Kalaloo, where you use coconut milk and veggie fish and tomatoes in it. So you can do that as well. And my students, like I said, they're from Caribbean. They often did theirs with coconut milk. Okay, I'm going to add some more McKay's. I'm going to add some more bacon. And you put as much or as little as you like and a little more sugar. And then the beauty of this is you don't have to add a lot of water. I'm going to add about two cups of water. Make sure that it's down there on the bottom. And literally, this kind of saves the day if you come flying in from work and need to do something really quickly. And if you haven't had time, to get um, the greens and cut them and all that, go to the grocery store and get those greens that are already cut in the bag and they work just as well. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to these because I like the way that it makes them shine and it gives a little flavor to it, maybe like a tablespoon for the whole pot. How's it going, Doc? It's going great. I don't use any water. I use only a little bit of olive oil. Okay. Um, but it's going well. Okay. Are you ready to put your top on yet? Almost not yet. I'm going to be a little bit behind you. Okay. But it'll be done by the time of the end of the show. Yes. Now, when I was talking to Doc before we started, she said she only cooks hers about 12 minutes. Have you filled yours all the way to the top, Doc? Not yet. But are you going to? Yes. Okay. So you're not sauteing yours today, right? No, I am. I'm sauteing my veggies first. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to add the greens. Okay. So if you cook it the way that Doc is doing it, you don't need to cook it as long. I'm going to cook mine longer because they are summer greens. So it's going to take a little longer to cook. And um, I did not do any sauteing or anything. So the pot is not hot. Now that it's all ready, I'm going to put the top on it. And one of the things that um, the lady at our office and I have learned is that every single one of these pots is totally different. Every one. So you have to know your pot and follow what your pot says. And we have one here, one at the office, and Ms. Garney has her own. And so we sometimes get confused going back and forth. But make sure that you're cooking it on manual or pressure and that you're just going to cook it. For me, it's going to be 20 minutes. Now, I mentioned the other day when I cooked the beans in here that if you add whatever you're going to cook and you put hot water in it, it won't take as long to heat up to get to where it's ready to cook. So that's helpful information. Or if you're doing like dock and saute and stuff, then of course it's not going to take as long to set up either. All right, next we're going to do this macaroni, and it's ready. I'm, I'm asking that as I make this, you pay attention to what I'm doing with it, but then you think about the macaroni and cheese that you're used to eating and what it tastes like and what your mama or you put in it to make it taste good, 
And those are the things that you can add from a plant-based perspective to make this delicious. What I have today, I'm going to put some plant-based margarine in here. And if you are familiar at all with Country Crop, they now have um, a really good um, margarine that is, one is almond, one is olive, one is avocado. I'm using the olive oil one today. And I'm putting this in here because this helps to make it creamy. The next thing that I'm gonna add is the cheese. And I'm just gonna go ahead and dump this in and then I'll walk through what I've used. And I'm gonna set this back on the stove where it's still kind of hot so that the cheese can melt. Did you say that with sour cream? I did add some sour cream. Okay, that makes it more creamy. Yes, and, and I have a friend who adds vegan cream cheese to her. She likes the way that sets up for her. And of course, I mentioned the other day, those of you who are used to putting eggs in your mac and cheese, you can use the just egg if you want to, um, to give it that texture that you're used to, if that's what you want. I used to cook it with eggs, and then I stopped, and my family was very happy with what I came up with. So when you're making this, you want the cheese to be good cheese, or it's no sense in having it. The basis for the cheeses that I use are follow your heart, and I use cheddar, mozzarella, and I used to use Monterey Jack, but they stopped making the Monterey Jack. So now I use the smoked Gouda, and that comes in slices only. It doesn't come grated like this. So I take about half the pack, cut out half the pack, and then cut that into small pieces so it'll melt like these cheeses. So these are the ones that I use as the basis for mine. Then there are a couple other companies that you might be interested in experimenting with. We mentioned Miyoko's the other day. I tried Miyoko's one day. I wasn't bowled over by it, nor did I want to pay what it costs. But a lot of people swear by Miyoko. So that's another brand that you can use. Daya makes some cheese. Their slices are really good. And then this is their cutting board edition of cheese. And I like to use this sometimes because it's pullier than the other cheeses. So this is something that you could use as well. At Aldi, the Earth Grown makes mozzarella. And this is really good. We have used this on pizzas when we make it at home. And Walmart makes a um, mozzarella style shred and a cheddar style shred that you could use also. Now the brand that has the most flavors or varieties is Violife. And I have a few of those in front of you to see. You've got cheddar, um, mozzarella. This is a shredded, um, where is it? Colby Jack combination. They've got smoked provolone. They have something called aged cheddar. They have Parmesan that is grateable. They've got um, a bunch more. And just standing in front of the store and looking at the ones that you like to taste, I know, who is it? Patty LaBelle made a mac and cheese years ago on Oprah with all those cheeses that are in there. You can experiment with those using the plant-based ones and then come up with what makes you the happiest and then you'll have the cheese that you like. I mentioned the other day that um, one of the largest sources of sodium in the diet is animal products. So when you're making mac and cheese this way, it's going to be a little challenging for it to taste exactly the same because this is not made from animal product, which means that it's not going to be as salty tasting. And that's really what's in the back of our mouth. The other thing that makes cheese taste the way that we love to eat it is that it has been aged or rotting for a, a while in order to acquire the cheesiness and that strong flavor. The longer it has rotted, the stronger the flavor is. And in order to get that twang in your mouth, what I have learned to do is add again, like when we made the ricotta the other day, I added some lemon juice to that. So I add a little lemon juice to the mac and cheese recipe, which gives you that deep cheddar, strong flavor that you get from that and like blue cheeses. So I add that to it. And then I add some nutritional yeast flakes, which give it a cheesy flavor. And that is something that's popular in our social structure. Then I'm going to start adding my seasonings and the milk. I've got two cups of milk here, and I'm going to play with that. Sometimes I'll add a little more milk. Sometimes I will add a little water, depending on how it looks. My husband and son like a creamy mac and cheese. I like one that's crunchy, 
where you can, you know, go on the bottom of the pan and, and get those crunchies and around the edges. And so sometimes they compromise with me and I don't make it quite as creamy as they usually do it. Okay, I'm gonna bring this over there once I've seasoned everything. Okay, now to season it. Garlic powder, onion powder. And I put more onion powder than I do garlic. But if my husband had his way, he would put lots of garlic. And then you just play with it until you get it how you want it to be. And then I use McKay's chicken stock. And if you have a recipe for mac and cheese and all you use was salt and pepper, you need to ask Doc how you can get some of that pepper that is not harmful to you so that you can add that to this and that'll take care of that. Then you're gonna add some salt to it and you decide how much salt you wanna put in there as you are adding it. Usually when you're making macaroni or pasta of any sort, you boil the pasta in salt and I don't do that. That way the um, pasta is seasoned once it comes out of the pot. I tend to wait and add the salt to this mixture after I have um, seasoned it. Okay, now this is usually when my husband shows up in the kitchen. I'm gonna taste this and see how we're doing. Mm. 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 Questions at all about this mac and cheese? It looks good. Are you going to come and let us see it when you finish? Yes. yes. I'm going to put it back on the stove for just a couple seconds. Okay. We'll Someone see. also mentioned that uh, Lloyd Martin said that ground papaya seeds also give a peppery-like quality to foods. Now, you know, we actually have tried the papaya seeds. If he knows of a brand that's really good, let us know because we've been experimenting at the office and the ones that we've gotten hasn't done it for us. So... Is it a certain kind of papaya? Is it a certain brand of papaya seed that we need to be getting? Because we were really disappointed. <laughs> I don't know, maybe he'll put it in the chat again and let us know. Okay. All right. So we got that going. Any other questions? No, someone's a plant-based Karen who's been joining us all three days said that um, she's still at work, so when she gets home, she's going to make these recipes. <laughs> okay, plant-based Karen, we're sorry you can't be here with us today. All right, the pan. Now, the cake that we're making today and this macaroni and cheese freeze really well, if that's the case that you need to do, so you don't have to worry about that. And if you're the type of person who makes a roux when you make your macaroni and cheese, instead of dumping it in like that, you can also do that with the non-dairy milks and cheeses and then pour the sauce over the macaroni. Now, I was saying that, um, what difference does making the roux make? Well, for some people, they like the way that it creams up as a sauce and everything is evenly distributed. I like the way the cheese pieces are in there and they get pulley when you when you serve it. So that's why I do it this way. Oh, okay. I have done it both ways. <clears throat> but this is the easiest way. And then for those of you who um, are interested on our YouTube channel, there's an old version of me making the macaroni and cheese and the pound cake that you can watch again once we're done with this. Yeah, this tastes yummy. Okay, I'm gonna bring it on over. So you can see it. Everybody there? Looks like mac and cheese to me. Yes? And then we're gonna pour it in the bowl. It looks that. great. I didn't wanna interrupt the picture. Oh, they were looking at it? Yeah, but it looks, it looks really good. Okay. And then we're going to um, pour it in the pan. Okay. 
So Lloyd Martin said about the papaya seeds, he says that he just uses the fresh seeds and grinds them himself and um, he dries them out and uses a pepper grinder, so. Okay, well maybe we need to do it ourselves and not buy somebody else. Okay, so there Pamela asks, um, Pamela asks, do you grease the pan? For the macaroni and cheese? Yes. No, ma'am. Okay. And then the next thing I'm going to do is put the cheese on top. And what I like to do is use a combination of cheeses on the top the same way I've done inside. So I'm putting cheddar and mozzarella on top. And Minnie asks, Minnie Jones asks, when you're doing all that mixing, to what texture do you cook the macaroni? What does she mean to what texture? How done do you want it to be? Yeah, maybe so. Usually I cook it at about 350, 400 for about 35, 40 minutes. No, I think the, um, I don't know if she means the oh, macaroni itself. Macaroni? Yes. It depends on what you like. Um, if you're using traditional pasta like I did today, the normal, what, 11 minutes, 9 minutes that they tell you to cook, it should be fine. Okay. I, I failed to mention at the beginning, which I usually do, that if you want to use whole grain pasta, you can do this. I know I was introduced to Delalo brand pastas when I was up at Andrews visiting my nephew and his wife. Um, and I got it at Apple Valley. So you should be able to find the Lalo brand at Apple Valley there. And if you want to use whole wheat pasta, you can use whole wheat pasta too. It's up to you. And I hope that you feel challenged to do this with me suggesting that you put on there what makes you happy. Because a lot of times when we have gone and, and we've eaten in the company of people who are plant-based the food tastes different than what you expect it to taste. And it may be that the, the way they cook it is a little different than what you would normally do. So that's why I introduce you to all the cheeses that you can use if you want to, um, the different brands that you can try. And then one of the tricks that I'm getting ready to tell you now is when you're baking macaroni and cheese or lasagna or any other dish that has cheese in it that is plant-based, you have to cover the dish or the cheese is not going to melt and be gooey. And we want this to be nice and gooey and like macaroni and cheese. Um, my mom and I and my girlfriend, Judy, came up with this recipe some years ago. I have been visiting my girlfriend's house, Vanessa, for potlucks. And she was always welcoming to us as we changed our diets. So she's like, Donna, bring your mac and cheese. So I would. And at that time, I was making strictly the cashew mac and cheese because they had not invented these cheeses yet. And we just put all our food out there with everybody else's and only my husband and son and I would eat the vegan mac and cheese. I don't think it was because it tasted bad, but because it didn't look as appetizing. So I stood there and looked at it one day, I'm like, okay, I gotta do better than this. And my mom and my girlfriend, Judy and I were in the kitchen and we have bought this follow your heart cheese, which at the time came in blocks that you could grate. And that's how we came up with this recipe, just playing with it. And we wanted to make sure that it was gooey. So we looked at recipes that we were used to making with. And then we put the cheese on top of it. And that's when I discovered that you definitely needed to cover this in order for it to melt. And then once this, the mac and cheese is just about done, you literally take the foil off if you're gonna use foil or the glass top if you use a glass top and then turn on the um, broiler and then make it brown the way we're used to eating it. And then the longer you leave it in the oven on a lower level, you're going to get all the crunchy edges around the side. And um, yeah, my students loved it. I have people contacting me who knew my students, who knew my son, who've been to my house um, because it's really good. It's really good. And if you want to use evaporated milk, I don't know if I told you that there is a plant-based version. Have you seen that, Doc? I think the I saw it online. Okay. Yeah, but I'm not sure if I saw it in the store. I may have seen this. I can't remember where I saw it. But somebody made the comment that that looks like smack your blank. Mac yes, it is. <laughs> somebody mama going to get slapped for dinner. Okay, this is Nature's Charm evaporated milk. 
If y'all are used to using evaporated milk, then you get some of this. Look at mama's recipe. If she wrote it down, if she didn't write it down, then you talk to her or somebody that you know and find out what they put in theirs. Then find the plant-based version of it. And then as you're playing with it, pray and ask God to tell you what seasonings need to go in there, pop those in there, and you have some mac and cheese that's going to make you want to slap somebody. Right. Someone said that... Um that does a condense well let me, let me ask this question does the condensed milk make it sweeter uh, does it have like a sweetness to it or I, well this is evaporated. like a creamer this is evaporated they have condensed too which is, oh that's evaporated well, this is evaporated milk so this shouldn't make it sweet okay okay that's it's very evaporated. and soy free rich tasty and vegan and i remember growing up you can have it if you want. Okay. Um, I remember growing up and using evaporated milk for certain dishes. And if it's creaminess that you're looking for, remember now, these non-dairy products are not as high in fat and cholesterol and saturated fat as your milks are. So they're not going to be quite as thick and creamy, but you can, you can definitely make that happen. And if you want to, you can add flour and make the roux or add flour to your mix to thicken that up some as well also. Okay, I'm gonna stitch this here because we're waiting on this cake. Let me see, maybe I can put it in the oven. Check and see if there are any questions, Doc, while I'm making this change here. Yeah, I know someone said that um, they think that's what they did wrong, that they didn't cover as they should. Yes, you, 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 you get it all mixed up and it tastes perfect. And you put the cheese on and you say, thank you, Jesus, for giving me this recipe. I'm trying to do better. And you don't cover it and it's a hot mess when you take it out of the oven. So cover it. Cover it every single time. And the first time you do it, you'll be amazed. It's a different melting point. That's, that's what's going on. And it, it, the animal product melts more quickly without steaming. And this has to be steamed in order for it to get real melty. So add the top to it. I'm going to go ahead and slide this mac and cheese in the oven next to this cake to get it started. And it's rising beautifully. <laughs> you all are going to love it. Well, I think we would love it more if we could eat it. <laughs> Here we go again, Doc. Here we go again. Maybe you should make a visit to Lake Region in person so that we could eat some of this food. We'll see how what, what God has planned. <laughs> okay, now you ask for the little burgers, the um, oat burgers. So I'm gonna show you how I do these. And you know how when you're making regular oatmeal and you have some leftover, it gets thick like this? This is what you're trying to do. The first time my mom and I made these, I was like stunned. I could not believe it. You can now take these if you want to and roll them in your hand, or you can do what I'm about to do and use this burger press. You can get these burger presses at, at home stores, no problem, and they're easy to do. So what I'm going to do is take some of this mix and put it here. And then I'm going to use this to mash it into shape. And when it comes out, you have these cute little burgers that have grill lines on them. I'm going to come over and show you once I get them done. And then you put these on your pan and you bake them in the oven. If you want them thinner, of course, you can make them thinner. These are kind of thick like burgers. When I was a patient at Wildwood, they made these one day and we went on a picnic and I didn't know that this is what they had made for lunch. And when we got there for lunch, they're doing burgers and I'm like, oh, we got grillers today. And it turned out that it was nothing but oat burgers, but the presentation made all the difference in the world. Now in our home, when we do oat burgers, we don't eat them plain. We always do them with gravy. And so I would probably make a gravy to go over these. You put them in the mold, you mash it down like that to get the lines. Then you take it out 
and you slide it off and you put it on your pan and bake it. Questions as we're doing this? And I don't see um, uh, any questions. Someone said that they're coming for a meal. That was plant-based Karen. <laughs> Um, is this is this the same bacon that you use? Yes. Okay. Yes, I I've been using it so long that I have jar containers when they used to sell it big. Okay. And so that's why mine is the size that it is. And what I do is I buy it in bulk, and then I fill up the containers. Okay. Yeah. And if you all have if you all have Apple Valley stores and something at Shiloh where you can get this stuff. Make it a commitment of the conference to have this stuff available for you. And it's not all the meat products necessarily, but the seasonings. If you can get the seasonings, there's another recipe I think that's in that book that I make pecan patties out of that are straight up pecan. These right here are oat pecan patties. And, and you could also use walnuts in here if you want it. But it's the seasoning that makes a difference. So these have more of a beefy flavor to them. But if I wanted to make it like a fish patty of some kind, I could put um, some of the um, fish seasonings in here, the kelp, and that would give it that flavor. So you want to make sure that you have access and that it's not very expensive. And your seasonings are far less expensive than the veggie meat. Right. Someone asked um, where you can get the bacon. Um, now, here in Chicago, I'm in the Chicagoland area. And I bought this from the Apple Valley in Westmont. I know it's also available at the um, Shiloh store. And then I'm sure it's available at an, if you have an Apple Valley near you. I also order from Country Life there in Michigan. Okay. And, and you're able to get all of that online. And when we, um, when we first moved to Huntsville, we used to drive back to Atlanta regularly because back then they didn't have all the stuff that we were used to getting in Atlanta for our journey to better health. And then they started to get more, but there were still some things that I wanted and couldn't get. So we would order from Country Life Natural Foods. And with the cost of the food and the shipping, it was still to our advantage to order it. Awesome. So you should be able to get the big jars of the, seed, the um, vanilla flavoring from them. I usually get um, nutritional yeast flakes, maybe some gluten flour. And then I said yesterday, something that I demonstrated, I use pecans in. And if a recipe calls for a pecan meal, you do not have to spend extra dollars for the pecan meal. You can literally just take your pecans and put them in the blender and, and blend them into meal. And you'll have pecan meal, walnut meal, whatever kind you want. Awesome. Somebody asked, where did you get that burger press from? You know, my girlfriend and I, Glenda, we travel together and we both love to cook. I don't know if these stores are even open anymore, but there's a kitchen outlet store that's at the outlets. And we were able to get these and we got our KitchenAid, really good price and a bunch of other stuff. But I've also seen them at places like Bath and Body Works. And they may have them at like a Walmart or a Target too. But we found the different sizes um, at the kitchen outlet store on the highway. Y'all asking the good questions. So we'll bake these until they're brown and you can flip them. And then if you decide that you want to make like little breakfast sausages out of them, you can add more sage to it and give it a sausage -y kind of flavor. We had a clinic in Atlanta where we helped patients. We did a project with the Office of Minority Health, and they had patients come from a primary health care center to our clinic who were at risk for diabetes or may have been suffering from diabetes, hypertension, um, wanted to lose weight. We did a two and a half day out there um, outpatient program. And that might be something that you're interested in, Doc. And one of the things that we did was um, hands on cooking classes. And we used to make these oat burgers for them or they would make the oat burgers themselves. And um, of course we know that oat is excellent when it comes because it's high in fiber. So it's really good if you're trying to get your cholesterol down. Um, 
it's just a good thing to have. And this way, you know, as good as I have another recipe that I think is in the pink book for millet patties. If it's not, I know it's in the first book. And and millet is actually an African grain, if I'm remembering that right. But I don't know how many of us in the hood or those who live in the suburbs who have relatives in the hood are used to cooking with millet. And so one way to help people to reach them where they are, more often than not, they're going to have some oatmeal. And these are just Quaker, Quaker quick oats, Walmart quick oats, Kroger, whatever your grocery store is up there, oats that you can use. It doesn't have to be anything special at all. And then, of course, if you wanted to, you could also make this into um, a meatloaf if you wanted to and bake it in a pan like you would meatloaf and put barbecue sauce on top. You could add curry to this if you wanted to. Stella asked, do you spray the burger press first? Say it again. Do you spray the burger press first? I haven't sprayed it since I've been using it this time. You could if you wanted to. And I think um, that was one of the things that, that was challenging for me to believe when I, when I started eating this way, because I grew up where you put a, a lot of fat on stuff and you sprayed everything and all of that. And I discovered that you didn't have to. You, you can go totally oil free if you want, or you can go lighter oil and you're surprised at how well it does. And I think part of the reason this works so well is because when you're, when you're cooking this way, you're using the whole food that has oils in it. So, so like when we make the grits, when we make the whole grain grits, they don't get all dry and hard like Aunt Jemima grits do because those grits have been processed and all of the bran and the germ where the oils and the healthy um, components are have been taken out. And so when you're using the whole grit, the longer you cook it, the more tender it gets. And if you have some left over, you just add a little water to it and it comes right back and it and it's because the body is there from all of the essential ingredients that have not been removed. So I didn't use anything to spray this time. I need to bring it over there so y'all can see these. Those are the little patties with the lines on them. And we're gonna bake these in the oven probably for about 20 minutes and then flip them over and get them browned on the other side. And this is something that if you experiment with it, um, you can make these ahead of time and freeze them and you can make them this size or you could make them in the big size. I had the big press out here. What did I do with it? I don't know what I did with it, but you can also make them in a larger size. Here you go. You can also buy a big press like this and then you have burgers that are the size of a burger bun. And so to make these, bake them put them in the freezer and freezer bags. You always have something that you can just grab and use and eat. And it's really, really good. Any questions? I hope the person who asked for oatmeal patties was here today so that they could get some oatmeal patties. I think that was plant-based Karen. Was that you plant-based Karen who asked about the oatmeal patties? And then this, this is the recipe that that is in the book, but and when you put it in gravy, then it gets a little softer and it's more like the oat burgers that we're probably used to eating. Or you can make it so that it's looser in the mix itself and then form them into patties. And if you wanted to brown them in oil, you could brown them in oil. And then um, when you take them out of the oil and you have a little oil left in the pan, you put some onions and bell peppers, mushrooms if you want to in there, saute that, then add your flour probably the amount of oil you have in there to about two tablespoons of flour. Get the flour as brown as you want it, then add your water to it and add your seasonings. I usually use Bragg's, McKay's chicken style, and some sage, and then maybe a little something else if, if, if it tastes like it needs something else. And then take the patties and float them back inside of there, or if you decide to make the patties ahead of time for Sabbath, and then when you get home from church, or it's time to eat because we're not at church yet, you take the patties out and put them in the pan, make the hot gravy and pour the gravy over them and stick them in the oven until the patties are heated. And as the patties heat up, that's the thing, the beautiful thing with grains 
is that it continues to swell and swell and swell. The capacity to swell is high. And so then, then you're going to have these soft, delicious, amazing, juicy patties. All you need is some mashed potatoes and some rice or maybe next to a little macaroni and cheese like y'all do on salad. And the benefit of eating this way, the, the person who asked the question about the oil, I know in our community we, we laugh about having the itis after we eat. And the itis literally is when you feel drunk and sleepy. And um, that is literally what's happening because you have poured all of this fat into your bloodstream and the body is trying to move it through and it can't do it. So your blood becomes sluggish and you get a little sleepy. Um, when you're eating a diet that's high in fat and animal fat, especially and all that processed stuff, then the body's not able to do what it's supposed to do. So you get the itis after dinner. And one of the things that's so amazing to me is we have introduced our new recipes to people who've come to our home or like last week we had a patient at the office and we were feeding them some things and they kept saying how clean the food tasted and that they didn't feel like they were going to go to sleep afterwards. And Sister White talks about um, how you shouldn't eat certain foods together because it can impair digestion and that you don't want to eat sugar and milk combinations because it turns to alcohol. And so literally moving to this keeps you alert because it's high fiber, because it's high water, because it's full of disease fighting phytochemicals, all of those things there. So if like after this dinner, we would, instead of having um, a lemon pound cake, or if we did lemon pound cake and made it into strawberry shortcake and put that strawberries and the whipped cream we made the other day on there. And then we may have had blueberry cobbler. And if someone didn't want to have the pound cake or the cobbler, you could just give them a bowl of blueberries and put that whipped topping on there they're eating beans and blueberries. So the beans um, that you're eating are not going to harm you like if you made meringue from eggs. And the blueberries are something that we know is connected to brain health. And so you're going to be more alert when, when you eat this way because your body is not under the weight of the saturated fat and cholesterol and all the processing and all the stuff that goes in those foods. And it's an amazing miracle. That, that you can experience and, and you see the benefit right away. You see the benefit right away. Another question? Um, I, I had a couple of questions. One is, is um, have you ever used black beans to make a cake? I have not. I have seen recipes where they, where they put them in brownies like what we made yesterday. But I imagine that it would be fine. Okay. I've just never done it. I, 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 um, my family wanted me to make the foods that they liked more healthily. And I remember I was having some, um, some complications with my bowels and we didn't understand what was going on. And now I know that the problem is the scar tissue from my breast cancer surgery has switched things around inside and it's pressing on stuff. And that's what changes it. But we didn't know that at the time. So I'm talking to my doctor and he says, well, we probably need to eat more fiber. And I'm like, what? He said, yeah, you need to eat more fiber. I said, well, I'm vegan. He said, what's that? So I had to explain to this surgeon what a vegan was and let him know that I was already at a high capacity of fiber. So I wasn't necessarily interested in adding beans to brownies or, or a, a carob cake. Because the carob was fiber and the flour was fiber and I was fine with that. When I was a patient at Wildwood, they made cornbread one day and I was so happy we were going to have cornbread. And when I got around to it, they had used corn flour, wheat flour, rye flour, and some other kind of flour. And I'm thinking, why y'all didn't just use cornmeal? And that would have been just fine. So for me, that wasn't what my family wanted. However, if you're interested in incorporating some of those things, you can do it. And if you're adding that to it, it would probably add to the moistness. It would probably give it more body because it's protein. And then the sweetener that you put in it would override the, the taste of the bean so that it would taste like it was the cake that you wanted it to be. Okay. Have you ever made a uh, sweet, uh, sweet potato cake or someone made me a sweet potato cake once and it was absolutely awesome. I have not, I have tasted one, but I haven't. Part of my challenge with making cakes um, was I was a pretty good cake baker. And when we started eating this way 25 years ago, we didn't have all of these leaveners 
And so I was trying to use air as the leavener to make a carrot cake or to make a sweet potato cake. And it mixed beautifully, it tasted beautifully, and it baked beautifully. And then when I took it out of the oven, it flattened right back down. So now that I have um, started playing around with other leaveners, I probably would experiment with something like that. And last week was the first time I had made a carrot cake in 25 years. And it was on it. And I used the garbanzo bean juice as the leavener in it. Mm. And it rose, stayed up, the texture was good. It was moist. I did the cream cheese icing using the non-dairy cream cheese, and it was absolutely delicious. Awesome. Another question? Anybody in the chat? I don't see any questions right now. Hey, you're coming there to dinner with us, Jock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The other thing that I'm supposed to be showing you how to make is this veggie chicken. This is the bag of veggie chicken that I buy from the Asian market. Were you able to get in touch with your friend, Doc? This is vegan bread. And I think that's the one I've had before, but I did, and she's going to connect me with some. I didn't get any for it today, though. Okay. Well, this is it. This is it. And it comes in a bag like this if you want to buy the big bag, or it comes in a little bag that might have four or six sticks in there, and the little bag is green and white. So this is the bag that I use. And y'all, this is as hard as this recipe is. It's not hard at all. You take a knife, you open the bag, you pour the meat in the dish that you're gonna bake it in, like that. And then, if you want to, Right now, you could add barbecue sauce to this. There's a barbecue sauce recipe in the book, Donna's Mama's, Donna's Mama's Barbecue Sauce, that you could pour over this and bake it in the oven. If you had a curry sauce, you could take the curry sauce and pour over this and bake it in the oven. If you wanted to fry them just like they are, you could pop them in some oil and they would get crispy because they have a little skin on them. These actually remind me of fry sticks that we used to eat when I was a child 50 years ago. Um, you can take this when it's thawed and pull the pieces apart if you wanted to make something like chicken and dumplings or if you want to make a chicken salad out of it. What I wanted to do was to find a way to make something that tasted like roasted chicken because I kept seeing people talk about a roasted chicken breast. I was raised in a vegetarian home and was never interested in eating meat or meat product or well, meat. I didn't like the meat products. My mother made me eat them. Um, but I noticed that people love this chicken. And one of the things that you should consider as Lake Region has offered this for you is the reason why it's important for you to give up those animals. Um, when we take meat and heat it, the act of heating it softens the fat that's in there and it activates a carcinogen. If we take that same meat and, and, and marinate it like what I'm about to do and put it on the grill, and there's a charcoal grill, as the meat is heated, the fat is melted, a carcinogen is activated, the fat drops down into the charcoal and the smoke comes back up, another carcinogen is activated. And then if we leave the meat on the grill till it gets crunchy, more carcinogen is activated. And this is why in Leviticus, God is clear that you can eat this chicken, but you are never, ever to eat the fat or the blood. So they did a study out in California. They were looking at men in a community and they were stunned to see the extremely high amount of prostate cancer among the African-American men compared to the white men who were all living in the same community. They did a diet history and they discovered that the black men were eating an inordinate amount of chicken. We do chicken wings, chicken legs, chicken thighs, chicken breast, barbecue chicken, fried chicken, baked chicken, boiled chicken. And, and, and that's probably a step in the right direction for many people who used to eat pork and beef. But when you are eating these products, especially if they're not prepared in the way that God prescribes, which is kosher,
where the animal is killed calmly, all the blood and fat is removed, and then you add seasonings back to it to make it taste like something, you are increasing your risk, not just for cancer, but for diabetes and hypertension and a whole lot of other chronic diseases that you don't have to have. So because a lot of the work that I do is community in nature, I run into people who are like, well, what am I gonna do for my, my chicken breast or for my chicken legs or whatever? And so when I found this product, I looked for a recipe that could help it look like it was baked chicken. So I take this chicken and if you don't have this chicken, but you have some um, garden chicken breasts, you could use the chicken breasts as well. If you have some fried chick, you can use the fried chick. If you have tofu that you have frozen and thawed out so it has a meaty texture, you can do the same thing for this. So this is some olive oil that's been seasoned with garlic powder and onion powder and thyme and rosemary and sage and um, what else? McKay chicken stock. And I'm literally just gonna pour this like this on the meat. Now, I know yesterday we talked about, because um, I had some chickettes. You said we could use that too. You can use chickettes too. Someone asked, can you cook these in the air fryer? So yeah, you can cook them in the air fryer. And if you have a, um, what are the two kinds of oven? Um, oh man, what is it called? The convection? Convection. That's what an air fryer is. An air fryer is a convection oven. So if you already have a convection oven in your house, you don't need to buy the convection oven unless you just want to use it for convenience as a tabletop appliance. And the thing is, you're cooking at a high temperature and there's a fan inside of it that distributes the air evenly over all of the areas of or the surface of the food that you're cooking. So that's why the air fryer works as well as it does. It's not a novel idea. It literally is a convection oven for your counter so that the principle is the same. And I don't fry these. I don't know the, the last time I, I fried these, maybe 25 years ago when I first um, started eating them because I discovered that when I baked them, um, the skin crisped up just as well as if I had fried them. Now, if you want to batter them, it might be a little easier to do those if you're going to fry those in a little oil rather than the convection. But yes, I also recommend the convection oven as well. I'm going to pull this over in a minute. I want to check the cake. It should be ready to come out. Almost. There we go. So if you have a marinade that you usually put on your chicken or your veggie chicken, or you have a loved one who likes to eat their little chicken wings, find what their marinade is, put it on this veggie chicken and make that for them and serve them some good health. I don't, I don't believe that we understood the impact of our choices on our health. I really don't believe we understood it. And um, I mentioned the other day when I discovered that it was the chocolate I was eating that was causing my breast to change. I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm, I, I'm done with it. I'm not doing it anymore. And then that leads me to the point that a lot of times people will say, well, I know it's better, but I don't think I could do it quickly. Sure you can. You can. You decide. And then you ask the Holy Spirit to give you power. And it's done. And you never have to go back. Ever. Because you're walking in newness of life and you're walking in the miracle that God has promised you. And I'm sure Doc could confirm that when her patients decide to make these choices, immediately things start to go the other direction. So you can do it. You got a question? Yeah, I, um, I have a comment and then a question. What I was going to say, I amen to what you just said. When I decided to go plant-based about seven years ago, I loved chicken. Man, I didn't think I was going to ever stop eating chicken. But the Lord told me, he called me, he sent someone to say, hey, look, you need to go plant-based. And um, I have loved it ever since. 
and never wanted to go back even when I smelled the smell of chicken. Uh, but that chicken looks good. Someone, Margaret asked, where, can you tell us again where you found the chicken? I find the chicken at Asian markets. Now I know for sure in, in Chicago that there are vegan restaurants that sell this. So there should also be Asian stores where you can buy this. In DC at the um, Adventist Book Center there, they sell it. So Pam Daly or the people at Apple Valley should be able to get it as well. But if you can't get it there, then try one of the local Asian markets like I mentioned yesterday. And they will have this. They also have some amazing vegan lamb chunks. And Miss Garney at our office and I last year, we did shish kebabs with those lamb chunks. You, somebody else was getting slapped because they were so good. You put them in a marinade similar to this with the onions and the bell peppers and the mushrooms and whatever else you want to put on there and then put it on the grill. And if you don't have a grill, we roasted ours in the oven and they were just absolutely delicious. The pulliness of it was very good. Sometimes I'll do that in a barbecue sauce. They have beef chunks. If you or someone you love like shrimp or crab, they have that. They also have fish, a fresh fish and a salmon that you can get. And then some of the um, Asian restaurants who have um, plant meats as a part of their menu have um, Asian um, names for it. And I, I can, I'm drawing a blank on, on some of them. But you can also buy some of those prepared in these institutional size bags as well. And I know, you know, at a church dinner, Sabbath dinner, you might have to add some onions and bell pepper, a little garlic, and kick it up some. But that's something that you could serve. And I enjoy recommending these because they have far less ingredients than some of the veggie meat that we have grown accustomed to eating because the Asians have done this for years. So that's a real option that you can embrace. And then if you are one of those who doesn't want to eat any veggie meat, that's fine too. Make yourself some old burgers or some pecan burgers or some millet burgers or some black bean and brown rice burgers. You have options that you can use. What's the sodium content like on those? You know, I don't even know. Okay. I don't know, but it's less than what's in the, our, I was amazed as a child my mom used to be at Camp Mini, so it's, it's ironic that I'm doing this for you guys this week. And Allegheny East, she was one of the ladies in the store, the campus store, who would um, work for Worthington and uh, Loma Linda and sample their products. And so people would come in after between meetings through the day, and mommy would have a pan and she'd round some stuff up or make a salad out of it, and we would serve that as samples. And back then, the food was very simple. And then when they were bought out by Morningstar Farms, um, and that company, the ingredient list got a lot longer. And now um, there's a guy, Don Otis, with Heritage Health Foods, who is trying to restore the Worthington products, at least, back to the simplicity. That's why when you and I were talking yesterday about the chickettes, I was so excited. Because chickettes comes in this long, skinny roll, but now they also have the big, fat roll that's like the chicken roll. And the chickettes don't have any eggs in them. And so we're watching, I think, under pressure, some of the products that we use um, culturally um, become healthier because there's so many more options on the market and they want to be in the competition as well. So if you have some chickettes, um, that's what you said you were going to use. What I would do if you're going to do them, Doc, is pull them into bigger pieces so that it looks, because a little roll, do you have a little roll or a big roll? I have a little roll. Okay, well, pull them into as big pieces as you can and then find the big roll and you'll be able to pull those into bigger pieces. And my daddy used to take those and dip them in a wet batter or dry batter and fry them. But you could also do one of these marinades and bake them in the oven. Okay, that, that looks good. That looks like real chicken. Yeah, girl. And when people come over here, except for the stick, that's what throws them off because as they start to bite it, they think they're eating a little chicken something. And then they get to the stick and they're like, what was that? And this is something that we serve when I have big dinners or when I'm in the community and I want to offer something that people can eat. And I think I mentioned yesterday one of our patients and dialysis. And um, when he decided to give up the animal products totally and he stopped by the office, he's like, Miss Donna, can you make me some of that chicken stuff you make? And I'm like, yeah. So every two and a half, three weeks, he would show up, give me a little money to buy some and make them for him just like this so that he could have that as an option. And I think it's time for us to stop fussing about that. 
It's time for us to meet people where they are. That's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus did. Meet them where they are, point them in the direction where they can do more and let the Holy Spirit convict them as they go to, on their journey for better health. So um, Lloyd Martin put in the chat that um, Pam Daly has these. So if you're in that area, I'm gonna call Pam later and say, we're gonna be sending a lot of people to the store. <laughs> Listen, it's so good. And the little skin that comes up on it, it's just delicious. It's delicious. And my husband, he wasn't a big fan of them at first, but now I can't make them fast enough for him. And what I did was, th this was just a basic um, um, marinade, but if you're from Louisiana and you put that Louisiana marinade on there, it can taste like that. If you want to make it so that it is, um, what's that Jamaican one that's spicy? Oh, uh, well, almost said it. Jerk. Oh, the jerk, yes. Put yes. the jerk season on there. You can make it taste how. Oh, that's good. Idea. Yeah, see, see? Yes. Jesus met the people where they were. <laughs> when the disciples, um, after he left, the Holy Spirit came down on them and they started speaking. Everybody heard the information in their own language. And so if the language is Caribbean, then make it Caribbean. If the language is African, then make it African. If it's Louisiana, then make it New Orleans. I mean, that's what you do. Another question? Right, oh, Lloyd made a correction that she doesn't have the Asian chicken, she has a large chickette. But we'll talk to her to see if she can get the Asian chicken. She should be able to. And uh, someone asked again, can you just go again briefly through what you use for the marinade? Yes, that's in the recipe pack. Is it on here? Yeah, uh. I did, I don't know if it's in this book or if it's in the, um, but it's in your handout, the holiday handout. It's in there. I used a half a cup of oil, garlic powder, onion powder, McKay chicken style, thyme, rosemary. I think I may have added parsley today and some um, smoked paprika. And then if you want to, you can add um, the hot pepper, red pepper flakes. And if I had some of that um, black pepper seasoning, that would be on in there for sure. But I didn't want to even mention it because I can't get it anymore. But alas, the Lord has sent you to me. Hallelujah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to turn the oven up and get this mat going. Okay, we'll give this a couple seconds to cool down some and then I'll take it out of this pan so you can see what it looks like. Are your greens done yet, ma'am? They are. I just took the top off, so I'm going to take a look at them. Okay. Now, the cake is too hot for me to put a glaze on it, but if I were going to glaze this, I would take some of that confectioner's sugar, squeeze some lemon juice, fresh lemon juice in it, and stir that up and then pour that over it so that when you slice the cake, you get sweet. And when you taste the icing, it's like a sour sweet, and it's really, really good. Let's see what these greens look like here. Sabbath dinner is ready. And I don't know what time the sun sets up there, but y'all should have some time to go on now and make, yes, Lord, make you some dinner. They smell so good, Doc. I remember once that Walter Pearson had a um, 
you know, we always love listening to his sermons. And one of the, and during one of his sermons, he talked about like going to people's homes. Yes. You would always be scared if you heard a can open. <laughs> <laughs> but if he could smell like aromas, you know, but if you heard that can open. You got worried. I think the other thing that we have a really good opportunity to do right now is to teach people how to do stuff from field to table. I don't know where the churches in Lake Region are located. I was at one of the ones in Detroit a couple of years ago. But if you're on a lot that has some dirt on it, you can plant a garden and feed the church in the community and show them how to make these dishes. That's the and why idea. they're so good for them. Okay, we got greens for Sabbath dinner. Oh. Y'all see the greens? Ready to go. All I need is some cornbread. And um, I mentioned yesterday about decolonizing your plate. There is a dietitian that I follow on Instagram who um, is about affirming our cultural foods. And we all know now that kale is a really popular green, but she wants you to know that collard greens have as much or more of the nutrients that kale have. And so don't let folk talk you out of your collards and your kale and your mustard and your turnips and your callaloo. Make sure that you keep eating those things. And then cross-culturally, whether you're Asian, Hispanic, African American, African, we use a lot of beans. So make sure that you're eating a good variety of beans. Um, I used to make a veggie bean patty and we know the Muslims sell the bean pies. So there are options to do that. And then you need to figure out some things that you can use to thicken it so that you don't have to put the eggs in it. And if you're gonna make a bean pie like the Muslims do and you whip those beans up real good and sweeten them really good and put them in a good pie crust full of fiber. Um, there's a statement in either Councils on Diet and Food or Ministry of Healing that says that everywhere around the world, God placed all the foods that the people in that part of the world would need. And because we are uniquely brought to this country from the continent of Africa, a lot of what God gave us initially still is on the mainland. We were fortunate enough to bring some things with us on the boats that we integrated into what we eat here in America. Um, and then because of the way technology and everything is, we can go to Google and find out some stuff that, that is native to um, Africa and add them to what we do. So make sure you do that. Then I wanna encourage you to um, follow the Slave Food Project. Google that, I'm not sure. I think it's slavefood.org. Dr. Columbus Batiste was a cardiologist and his buddy, er Eric Walsh, who is a, uh, um, I think he's internal med and doctor of public health. They have started the Slave Food Project. And for the last year during COVID, every Friday night at six o'clock on Facebook and on their YouTube channel, they've been encouraging us to leave the mentality of the slave food, not the beans and the, um, the greens and all that that we were eating from the garden, but all of the other stuff. That, that we had to make do with that is not healthy for us. And that was not part of the African dietary blessed by God before we were brought over here. So that's a good resource for you. And then I believe I've already put in the chat and she should have shared with you that next Thursday at 6 p.m. I'm doing a live presentation called Black Women, Breast Cancer and Chronic Disease. And we have one woman who is a breast cancer surgeon who promotes plant-based living to her patients. Another woman who's doing research at Harvard on the, the, the why behind plants for our, our health. Another woman who is the epitome, in my opinion, of healthy living as far as how she eats and lives. And she's internal medicine, lifestyle medicine certified, and she loves to get her patients off of medication. Then we have another one who is a doctor in psychology who's going to talk about the impact of trauma on us. Every woman that I've met in 25 years who's had breast cancer that I've gotten to know has been experiencing some type of trauma, whether it was physical or emotional abuse or some kind of stress in their lives. It was, it was 
I always saw it. And then I began to see the same symptoms in my life and realize and recognize the impact of stress. And then I have Cynthia Payon and Heather Martin and I are going to do some food demonstrations that are plant-based. So we hope that you can join us for that. You can follow Slay Food. And I don't know if they have one tonight, but they have a whole a bunch of them from the last year that are available on their page on Facebook and on the um, YouTube channel, Slave Food Project, I think it's called. And it's something that will, will change your life. The interviews that they've had over this last year about the effect of our choices on everything from some of the top experts um, in, in lifestyle medicine are affirming what God told us at the very beginning. And as a public health educator, um, it's been my, my, purpose to talk to people about how they, that's what public health is about, helping people's lives to improve. And as a people, we experience disparate um, rates for so many diseases. And one of the things that I shared with my husband was I noticed that as I ministered to black people when we were living in Atlanta specifically, as they embraced the lifestyle choices, the change in their health was just so quick. It turned right around. And so while Jesus no longer walks the earth, he's left the instructions. And there are plenty of us here who know how to read the manual and share the information with others. So I challenge you to um, find the science that supports what God has said now, because there's no excuse anymore. If it's what you wanna do to eat the standard American diet or eat outside of what God has originally given us, you always have that option. But the curse causeless does not come yet in Exodus 15, 26, the Bible says, if you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, do what's right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep his statutes. He won't put any of the diseases on you that he's put on the Egyptians for he's the Lord who heals you. And when you look at the Egyptian pyramids, the people who are laid up in there, um, they did post-mortems on them and they all died from diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, arthritis, cancer. It's all evidenced in their bones. And God is saying that his people don't have to do that or have that if they're willing to obey. And as a people, we know this last year has been real challenging on the heels of the previous presidency. And the Calvary is not coming for us. We're going to have to do this ourselves. And if you make yourself a, 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 a mission of one, God can use you to impact someone who's going to impact someone else. And it's like that that rock that you throw and the ripple on the pond and the difference that it makes as, as we heal our communities and get them ready for what I believe is the soon coming of Jesus Christ. As a Christian, I believe that 100%. And we want folk to know that ain't nobody coming for us, but we're here with help through the power of the great physician who still makes house calls through us. Any more questions? No, I think that's, um, I'll check here, but I think that's great. I did put in the link for your program next week. And I also wanted to let people know that uh, we here at Lake Region have been doing a lot of educational sessions. So please check out the Lake Region YouTube page. We did a program um, earlier this year with Milton Mills and uh, some other people about health. Oh, that looks awesome. That looks so good. Now, what kind of, I know you said you, what, what did you make the icing out of again? I'm going to mix some lemon juice with confectioner sugar to make a glaze okay. and then we'll spread the glaze on it. Okay. Oh, it looks so, oh man, I wish I could taste that. <laughs> Y'all have the recipe. I think maybe what I'll do, um, I'll see if I can post some pics on Lake Regions page. Will that, will they allow me to do that? Um, we'll see. Okay, I'll try and post pics of some of the finished dishes okay. on the region's page so everybody can see that. Okay. Any more questions? We're waiting to see what this macaroni and cheese looks like. Yes, we want to see what that macaroni and cheese look, looks like. Denise Robinson said that that uh, pound cake looks perfect, and it does. It looks absolutely awesome. I'll have to buy me a bunt cake. I don't. I mean, I don't have one of those bunt pans. Do you have um, um, layer pans? I do have a layer pan. You can make two layers out of it. Well, that's true. Because people now are doing this naked cake thing. So you can make two layers and put the glaze between it and then pour the glaze on the top. Mm, that's a good idea. Yeah. 
But yeah, if if you want to invest in one, do invest in one. And you and you can make it get two actually because you can make two cakes at a time. Mm -hmm. And so you can make like usually I'll do a lemon and then I'll do an almond. An almond cake. Uh huh. Oh okay. So instead of putting lemon flavoring in it, I'll put almond flavoring in it. Oh okay. I take some sliced almonds and put it over the batter. Mm. So as it bakes, the, the almonds have baked onto the cake, and then I put the glaze on top of that, and it almost looks like a bear claw. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Milton Mills has been to our home eating, and he's like, you wrong for this, girl. You wrong for this. <laughs> but it should taste good. I mean, the path to obedience is challenging because it goes against our will. That's where the challenge is. But the benefits to obedience, it, it outweighs everything. You, you cannot be obedient. You can't. It is. And I think the way that you, you know, I tell people that when you're eating differently, if you've been eating things that are really fatty, a lot of sweet and salty, you have to give time for your taste buds to adjust. But they will adjust quickly. You'll find yourself loving things that you thought you hated before. And then also the benefit of the way you feel. You feel so much better right away, right away. We have relatives and they always get on me about this. But the first thing that they notice is a change in their bowels. Right away. Right. It's like, okay, we're going to Donna's house, so you know what's going to happen. And that is something that you don't think about because you're trying to get your pressure down or get the tumor to shrink. And the very first thing that happens, obviously, is that your, your transit time becomes much shorter because all this fiber is in there. And then a lot of times people who move to a plant-based diet are complaining because they're getting gassy and everything. Well, that's because your intestines haven't worked in years and now they're down there working. So you want to exercise and you want to drink plenty of water till they get accustomed to it. And when I went to Wildwood, first thing in the morning, I'm trying to lay there and get some extra sleep. And I couldn't because my bowels were working and I had to jump up and go to the bathroom. And so something as simple as that can help with um, women who, whose bellies are pouchy, people who may have chronic headaches, who are achy. I know a lot of my arth the arthritis patients that my husband sees just tell them to get on high fiber, low sugar, right away things turn around. This is the healing that we've been looking for. And now that we know that the science confirms what the Bible has said, we need to be out there on the corners telling folk how to get well. And in this country, a lot of um, veganism is seen by the majority population, but the largest demographic for converting to plant-based eating is African-Americans. Right. percent of the majority population, 8% of African-Americans. And it seems to be taking us back to our roots, really. Really. Right. De definitely. There has definitely been an upsurge of African-Americans being interested in plant-based diets. And the other thing that I would add, too, is, you know, sometimes I, I eat beans a lot myself, too. And during my... Um, my studies, one of the things that I discovered is that papaya is really good for digestive issues because papaya has digestive enzymes. So eating papaya. So this week I've been eating papaya all week to help my gut um, do do well. And so that's something that that is helpful, too, if you're having gut um, issues. Um, someone also said that Joyce said that she called the eight people are calling places and <laughs> these products. And she called it in Indianapolis and they don't have it. I would suggest maybe looking on Amazon. Do you think that would be a good place, Donna? To, if they find, can't... to find the Asian meat? Yes. Some of them would have it. Um, the brand name for this. Verisoy. B-R-I-S-O-Y. Google that and you should be able to find places where you can get it. Right. That's what I would. That's what I would suggest. Um, if the stores don't have it. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this mac and cheese out and bring it so you can see it quickly. Then I'm gonna put it back into brown. Can y'all see that? Yes. 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 
So now I'm gonna put it back in the oven and turn the broiler on and brown it. And to the person who said that their cheese didn't melt, you see that it is meltable. Right, right. That looks um, that looks really good. <laughs> and what you use the via light for that? No, I did. That was um, follow your heart and Daya. Oh, okay. I put that on top. But again, whatever you like, you know, play with it, test the flavor, see what tastes more like what you like, um, what combinations you like. I do know that Daya also sells blocks and they make them in Monterey Jack and cheddar. And I want to say Gouda. I've only been able to find those. The I can get the cheddar here in Huntsville, but the Gouda and the Monterey Jack I've only seen in Tennessee at Wildwood. So maybe go to the, the company's website to see where else you could order that. And it seems to me that the blocks of cheese have more of the texture of animal cheese. And some of those cheeses you could literally do a, um, a cheese platter with, with crackers and grapes and that sort of thing. And it could pass for cheese. It, it, the texture, the smell, the taste is very, very similar compared to what's in the packages. And then know that because it has different um, properties than dairy cheese, it's going to act differently, but you get it at the right temperature and it melts right away. The tofu that I demonstrated the other day, I didn't put any cheese in, but I made myself a sandwich the next day and I just added some cheese to it on the pan and it melted right up into it and put it on a bagel and had a smoothie with it. So you can, you can play with it to get it how you want. You can make pizzas. Um, the, the calzones, you can put that in there. Anything that you put cheese in, you could use this, but experiment with the different brands to see which one tastes the closest to what you're used to. And then that's the one that you use. Another question? We wrote um, it today. Oh, they asked, Joyce asked, can you spell the name of the brand again? Of the cheeses or of the chicken? I think it's of the chicken. Okay. V as in Victor. E R I S O Y. Very soy. There's a company in California, and if Pam is managing the store, she should be able to order the um, institutional size bags and the small bags. Yeah, I've had that brand before. Um, I just Googled it and it said where to buy. And it's telling me where to buy it in Huntsville. So your phone is probably um, primed for the community that you live in. Just put in Verisoy where to buy. And then further down the page, it says Veggie USA, B E G E USA dot com. And, and Verisoy is one of their brands. Veggie USA is out in California, not far from where my cousins live, and they can get the stuff there. But I'm seeing it here on Instacart. And, and, and then look for your Asian markets. And sometimes it's not the biggest Asian market, it may be the little one on the corner. Because here in Huntsville, literally, the ones that have the, the most are the littler stores. The largest stores didn't have it. But you've got um, duck and and at, Chris, at Thanksgiving time, they make a turkey that has a cavity in it. Have you seen that? Uh, I don't know about that brand. Yeah. Veggie, this, these people make it Veggie USA. It's okay. an actual turkey that's shaped like a turkey and it has a cavity that you can stuff. And, and we've made it and basted it and baked it and browned it and sliced it like we were the Cosby's. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I just want to let everyone know that I'm going to be, again, placing a link to the evaluation. Please 
please um, complete that evaluation for us and let us know uh, what you thought of this program, what other things you would like to see. Um, and, uh, and then again, please visit the Lake Region uh, website, the, uh, the YouTube page, and you'll see all of our previous health videos. We've done some health videos. On, we usually do a video every week, every month, and we invite special guests on to talk about different health topics. So please um, check out our YouTube page as well. And then someone just said that um, they checked and LGS Classic Desserts in Oak Park, Michigan sells traditional and vegan bean pies. This is Linda Robinson. And they'll ship it to you. Okay. I think if we, if we really think about it, God is doing everything he can to give us access to everything we need to improve our health. He's awesome. He's an awesome God. Exactly. So how long would you bake that chicken? Um, Probably about 30 minutes until it's the tenderness or, or crispiness that you want. My son has said that he wants me to bake it so that it's brown, but it's still tender inside. Because sometimes I tend to make it crispy or it's brown and tender. And then when I reheat it, it gets a little dry. So just pay attention to the brownness and then I would have it up in a higher oven if you don't want to um, bake it too long, but get the Christmas right away. Right. And I know you didn't get a chance to um, do your rolls today because you said that that would take three hours and we didn't have three hours. But I did look and it is in the book. Yes. So if anyone wants to again get the book, this book yes. is the one I have. Um, and it is in here, the recipe for the rolls. And that is that is the vegan version of the one my mom made when I was a little girl at Trinity Temple Elementary School in Newark, New Jersey. And she made it for years, called it Green and Serve, and then we were able to veganize it. Excellent, excellent, looks good. I think we got, so I know we only have a few minutes left. If anybody has any last, last minute questions, please, um, or comments, please uh, put those in the chat. Again, please check out the link for the um, evaluation. And then I'll put in once more the link for Donna Green's Goodman program next week if you want to check that out. And we hope that um, at some point she will come back either um, virtually or in person uh, <laughs> to bring us some good food. We'll let, we'll let God show us what to do. Right, that's right. Because God God definitely led in, in this. So in the chat, I just put in the link for um, her program uh, next week. And I was just going to show you guys my greens. I don't know if I can show you what I made. They're still in my Instant Pot, but I use coconut milk. And it, this is the first time I ever used coconut milk. And it actually looks pretty good. And, and you know what? I added, I don't know if you can see it though. You can't see it. Turn it. Move, it turn. move it to your right some, I think. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Now tilt it towards us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can see it. Lift it up towards you. Yeah, there they are. I see. Well, it. I put cabbage in mine. I see. I see. Have you ever cooked turnip greens and cabbage together? Yeah, I, I like collards and cabbage together because it just gives it a different type of flavor. Yes, yes. And yes. I love putting those together. Yes, yes. But I'm definitely going to use the coconut milk more because that also gave it a different flavor that I've never had before. Probably a sweetness. Right. Definitely. Well, are there any other um, tips or anything else that you want to share with us before we end today? Um, do what God tells you to do. Eat right, exercise, get your fresh air and sunlight, go to bed on time. Get your relationships right, trust and obey Jesus. That means that everybody can have health, everybody. And, and, and God respects our experience and makes available in our experience the things that he knows that we need. 
And so I challenge you. I'm so thankful that we were able to work this out, but you could come into my kitchen and I could get to know some of you. And I hope that you decide to do this. Just, just start on your journey to better health and never look back. And then you can be the hands for Doc across Lake Region Conference. Right, right. Uh, Pamela Lindsay says, you have really inspired me. Thank you. Good. Praise God. Yes. Plant-based Karen says, everything looks so tasty. Good, good. I'm going to see if I can post some pictures on Lake Region um, page on Facebook. Right. And Denise Robinson says, this has been very, very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tell my friend Pam Daly now to hook y'all up. <laughs> and listen, I'm going to be in touch with you, Doc, because I need some of that black pepper. Definitely, definitely. I had somebody I had not to use it because that's all we had left. I had to save it for special edition because he was shaking it on everything. I'm like, we can't find it anymore. So yeah, we will talk. Yes, definitely let me know. I'll send you some and then maybe I can get you to send me a piece of that pound cake. I can do that. I can do that. That's not a problem. <laughs> Well, everyone, I just I just want to, again, thank Donna Green Goodman for uh, being with us these last three, three days. If you want to see this program again or any of the other two programs that she did, they are on the Lake Region YouTube page. You can watch them anytime. Please share these videos and please especially share them with people who are not Adventists. I know I, I streamed this through the Lake Region Conference, but it would be so great if we could share these with our non-Adventist friends or friends who are just trying to change their lifestyle. So please share these videos, share the website, share Donna's uh, program coming up next week, especially uh, for women, if you know anyone who's battling breast cancer or, in, or women who just want to know more about their health, um, share that program as well. Um, I'm just going to read these last couple of comments. Someone, uh, plant-based Karen again says, thank you so much for your sharing of knowledge and wisdom God has given you. Uh, Stella Crawford says, we need your demos more often. <laughs> Maybe the Lord will. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, Betty Yancey said, thank you. This has been wonderful. And, uh, Somebody said, try sauteed rice, cauliflower, and your greens. Mm, I don't know if I'm ready for that yet. <laughs> but, but if you cook it and you want me to taste it, I'll taste it. There you go. <laughs> so, there you go. Anyway, again, I just want to thank everyone for uh, joining us. We hope that you have a wonderful Sabbath dinner. Um, and we hope that you have been blessed by all these programs as I have been blessed. Again, thank you, Donna for being with us these last few days. I just want to tell everyone, have again a happy Sabbath, and happy we'll Sabbath. see you again next time. Everyone take care. Have a good evening. Bye.